To parenting now, though, the age-old tradition of eating meals as a family is in danger of going out of fashion. With our attention on various activities, screens or devices, sometimes we forget to simply focus on each other. On And Mum Pedia Pro 3 Coffee Group, we are talking about the politics of mealtimes with Joyce Lutus from The Parenting Place and Cara Gullick, who developed the ARC Assistant Learning Towers. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to have you here. Let's start with you, Joy. What is the value of meals together as a family? There's a huge amount of evidence supporting the benefits of families eating regularly together. And research shows that there are things like um, developing you know, good manners, um, great nutrition and cooking skills, and establishing family traditions. There are also indicators that show that children do better at school and their behaviour improves. Mm. And that's mm. also the time when you get the best intel out of them about Absolutely. what's been happening in their days. <laughs> that's right. Um, Cara, <laughs> what are the problems families face at meal times? Well, Especially with toddlers, they want to be involved and up at the kitchen bench, but parents often don't have um, the means to get them up and involved safely. So what they end up doing is balancing them on a chair or a stool, only to worry that they might fall. Mm. Um, there's, it's especially trying time at what they call the witching hour, like okay. around about five or six, when everyone's tired and exhausted from a, a really trying day. Little ones are vying for attention, parents are um, needing to cook meals, and often there's only one home. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that's quite stressful for them and, and they end up trying to balance the child on the hip while cooking with one hand or, or balance them on a bench and, and cook with one hand or they're on the floor playing and there's a lot of falling and, and tripping hazards. Mm. Yeah, this is sounding extremely familiar I think to a lot of people. <laughs> um, Joy, what are the worst habits that we slip into at mealtimes? Oh, these habits are easy to slip into. Um, becoming a short order cook for fussy eaters, oh. where you're preparing multiple meals. Another one is setting children to eat their dinner with technology, either in front of the television or connected to the iPad. And another bad habit is that parents will pop their children at the table to eat and then they'll be busy, preoccupied somewhere else. I mean, I understand that realistically in today's busy, um, fast-paced life, that it, you know, it isn't always easy for everyone to be home and having that ideal family meal time, but it is great if a parent can sit with the child when they eat. And I mean, some parents say to me in coaching, I'm not ready to eat my dinner at five o'clock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sit with your child, have some crackers, have a little snack, but sit and engage with them so that it's part of the lovely routine and rhythm of eating together. Yeah, we're not expecting you to eat fish fingers at five o'clock. That's no. obviously not, not <laughs> going to happen. Um, Cara, is it possible to discipline bad behaviour at the dinner table without sort of ruining the meal for everyone? Absolutely. I think positive reinforcement has always worked really well and children often copy what they see and if you're mm. behaving well and conversing, involve them as well. I've had a lot of um, feedback from um, parents and clients of the ARC assistant when they've had their little ones involved in cooking the meal and preparing the food. They seem a little bit more excited about eating it and, and getting involved and therefore their behaviour is a, a little bit better as well. Yeah, if they're a bit more invested in what's actually going onto their plate. Exactly. They've got a little bit of sense of pride in it. Yeah, mm. Joy, what do you think? Mm, yes, and coming at it from a positive point of view rather than don't talk with your mouth full, sit on the chair. Mm. Coming at it from, you know, chairs are for sitting on and remember that we finish our mouth full before we speak. My favourite phrase is, in our family we. In our family we sit on our bottoms at the table mm. and in our family we swallow before we talk. Uh, one parent actually told me they'd come up with a little beep if one of their children <laughs> were, were eating and talking, they'd go beep. And the children went, oh, that's it. So it was just a, a little thing that could, was transferable to every environment. Mm. And it also explained to the children why we have these rules in place. We don't stand on chairs because we may fall over. Mm. We don't eat, talk with our mouthful because bacon and eggs with five chews isn't particularly attractive to yeah. look at. Mm. So, yeah, those sorts of things. Is it okay, do you reckon, to, ch to cook two meals, though? Like one for the kids and one for you? Um, Oh, within reason, I think um, it's great to extend our child's palate. So let's look at being a little bit creative, and um, may it, but it's appropriate to make a, uh, a meal fit both children and right. adults. So and you know what, they may actually like what you're going to cook them. Don't expect that they're not going to like it just because mm. it's a different food for them. They may surprise you mm. all the time. Mm. Um, excellent. Great yeah. advice. Thank you so much, both of you. It's you're been a pleasure you. having you in. Coffee Group is brought to you by Anne Mum Pedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. If you have any worries that you'd like addressed by our parenting panel, message us on the Cafe Facebook page. One contributor will win this cool ebook.
wouldn't it be absolutely amazing to win this ebook? <laughs> it would be amazing, wouldn't it? And then you could put your own voice into it and you wouldn't be listening to me every week. <laughs> uh, congratulations to Kate Schwass, this week's winner. Thank you for your suggestion. Your ebook is on its way.